What's up guys, Chase Oliver 68 here, bringing you my October 29th, 2012 Raw Review. So let's get this started, but before we start the Raw Review, I just want to talk about one thing, and get it out of the way. Uh, the Susan G. Komen thing, congratulations for getting a million dollars. Breast cancer awareness is very effective in the world, and I'm pretty sure most of you subscribers have had uh, people or friends or even your own mother that has affected breast cancer, so it's good that they got a million dollars. And the month of October is ending. I don't know if Cena's going to stop wearing the pink. Who knows? But uh, congratulations to Susan G. Komen. Didn't didn't really want to get that in the review because, you know, it's just congratulating them. So why should I just do that in the middle of the review? Just start it off. So anyways, CM Punk came to the ring and said he had nothing to do with the rookie referee. And I know his name. I know it's Brad Maddox. But I'm not calling him Brad Maddox because that's not what the WWE is calling him. I'm calling him the Rookie Referee and saying a bunch of crap. And then Mick Foley comes out and Mick Foley just goes on. He's like, I told you. I told you, punk. You want to be a legend? Now you're just a statistic. And then you didn't do the hell and sell justice. Punk's like, fuck this, man. Look at this. I'm all being up. He's like showing his battle scars. Mick Foley was all like, you know, didn't give a shit, because Mick Foley's been a lot through the hell in a cell, and then CM Punk was like, you know what, we want to put tradition, you want to make tradition, let's have a traditional Survivor Series matchup, Team Punk versus Team Foley, and then it was like, oh my god, man, Raw building up to Survivor Series, I mean, Survivor Series is three weeks away, sounds great, man, sounds great, and then all of a sudden, it's just like, you know, Ryback comes out, oh, awesome, you know, Ryback is still pissed at Punk, man, he's still pissed, and... Punk runs away, and this leads to our first match where my boy JTG gets his ass kicked by Ryback. Ryback's like, beat me more, beat me more. And then Ryback cuts a promo. <laughs> like, he pushes Josh Matthews to the side. Ryback cuts a promo. He's like, beat me, Punk. Pretty much, like, he says something about revenge, but it wasn't that important. I mean, he just wants Punk fed to him. So, turns out Ryback is just hungry for Punk, and we're moving on to the segment. So, my question is, we didn't get any answers asked about rookie referee and CM Punk. That's just stupid. Now, now it makes me pissed off about the ending to Hell in a Cell. Because if rookie referee is not going to be a main factor, what's the point? Fuck this. I'm sorry. I'm, it's just stupid. Why even have rookie referee do anything if he's not even going to be a main factor? But we get some matches. We got Randy Orton versus Wade Barrett. Who cares? I mean, it's my boy Orton. It's my boy Orton. Did you see Orton? He was like pumping up the crowd tonight. But... Besides that, like, who cares? Because we see this match a lot. Wade Barrett barely ever wins. What what are they doing to Wade Barrett character? I mean, he still has a souvenir, but he's no longer a bare knuckle fighter. I mean, what what's going on? I, I don't I don't care. Randy Orton wins. Let's just move on. We get a champions versus champions match, and I'm like, huh? Like, why isn't this like on main event or a pay per view maybe? But Kofi Kingston taking on Antonio Cesaro. Miz was on commentary. The match was decent. It, it wasn't like anything too special. Miz attacks Kofi. I guess they're, they're great rivalry, as JR likes to call it. Not my words. JR said that at Hell in a Cell. Their great rivalry is going to continue. And and Cesaro and Miz were like beating him down. But who would save Kofi? Little Chris. Who saved Kofi? That's right. Our boy. Ah, uh, true. The truth shall set you free. Antonio Cesaro, you better watch out. Little Chris, watch Antonio Cesaro, watch out. That's right. Your United States Championship, buddy, it's over. It's over. Our truth, little Jimmy, they're going to take that belt away from you. You got to get got. Watch yourself, Antonio Cesaro. Watch yourself. Our truth is the future, man. Little Chris, isn't our truth the future? Little Chris says, our truth is the future. <sighs> but I'm happy that our truth will be feuding with Antonio Cesaro. I'm happy that I guess they're continuing Kofi and Miz. So let's just move on forward, shall we? We have our World Tag Team Champions taking on the Prime Time players who did not get an entrance. And that's going to be a recurring theme of the night. PTP loses. Hell no, had their usual funny moments. All I can say about this match. Moving on forward. We get another match with no entrance. Oh, wait, no, no, my mistake. I just want to talk about all the matches. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to talk about all the matches now. If you guys don't like it, sorry, because 
really, to be honest, this brawl was filler shit, and then it was like, oh, promo segments that may build up to future shit. So I'm going to do that, talk about all the matches, because really, to be honest, I could care less about some of the promos tonight, besides one of them. Um, moving on forward with another match that I'm going to talk about, we had <laughs> three-man band taking on Santino and Ryder. And Three Man Band, they had a funny segment where it's like behind the behind the scenes of the rock star. And Ginger Mahal was like, most people won't expect it, but I'm the funny one. And I was like, oh my goodness. Three Man Band is tremendous. I mean, people are hating on them because it's like, oh, it's just three jobbers. But fuck, man, dude. These guys are getting on TV. They're entertaining. And, and people are like, oh, I can't take them seriously. What the fuck? Who cares, man? Like, fuck, man. We've got Santino Morella be an idiot on TV with Maria and, and doing the honko meter. And that shit was good. But, oh, since we can't take them seriously, they can't be anything? Fuck off. No. Fuck this shit. Daniel Bryan and Kane. Really. They do stupid shit all the time. Yet we take them seriously. Why? Because Kane is there? Seriously, man. No. Three-man band. I don't give a shit. They're going to be one of the few reasons why the tag team division will be relevant once Kane and Daniel Bryan split up, once Road Scholar split up, and once Rey Mysterio and Sakara split up. Because you know those teams are going to split up soon. They ain't going to stay together forever. So, trust me. Three-man band, 100% support. They beat Santino and fucking Ryder. They should. And we move on. Another match we got tonight was Del Rio being pissed off like always, taking on Justin Gabriel, who had no entrance. The Rio wins. Let's move on. Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara took on Road Scholars. Very good matchup between these guys. I thought it kind of went a little bit too long for my taste. I mean, some there's like too much false finishes in this match for me. Uh, Sin Cara ends up losing because he tries to hit a senton. And then Road Scholars is like, nah, we're too smart for this shit. Cody Rhodes pulls Sandow out of the way. Sandow hits his neck breaker. One, two, three. Road Scholars win. And that's that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the match in a nutshell. I think I covered all the matches on this card. I, I may be forgetting one match. But let's get on to the promo segments. Because literally, this Raw was just filler. It was literally filler match after filler match after filler match. And a lot of tag team matches. Did Teddy Long get control of this Raw or something? I want to know. Because we had three tag team matches on Raw tonight. I mean, that's good. It shows that tag team division has a life. But three? Damn, that's impressive. But moving on forward... One of the promo segments we got tonight, <laughs> oh my goodness, was Vicky Guerrero with her evidence that Cena has been sleeping around with AJ Lee. And then all of a sudden, you know, they show evidence of Cena <laughs> asking AJ Lee out to in and out Burger, which Cena said oh, it was a joke. Then the evidence of Cena hugging AJ after she got fired. And Cena's response was, I was making her happy. Giving, giving her a hug. And then AJ Lee, you know, having a dinner date where Cena's wearing his Rise Above Cancer shit. Once again, evidence. And Cena said it was just a business lunch, dinner, whatever. And then the one that was like, oh my God, he got busted, was Cena and Vicky Guerrero's evidence of Cena and AJ. In an elevator. Oh my god, they went inside an elevator together. Which Cena all of a sudden became defensive, but it was like, we were just having a dinner date. We just went down the elevator, took her to her dorm room, and that is it. And then Vicky's like, are you sure she didn't give you her big old eyes? And she was like, oh, Cena, Cena having her AJ attacks. And I was like, oh my goodness, what, what can save the segment? I'm here to show the world. Dolph Ziggler's music hits. And then Ziggler has to speak on the mic like, Yo, guess we found out what this AJ Lee situation is all about. And I was like, what the fuck was that? And it seems like, too pissed off. You know the situation. Ugh, move out of my way. Cena, serious, pissed off walk. I mean, Cena has been that pissed since, like, Randy Orton punted his dad, man. Stupid. And not to mention, I forgot AJ Lee versus Beth Phoenix, which is equally stupid. But I guess it makes sense talking about this match since I am talking about the segment. Um, AJ Lee faced off against Beth Phoenix. Beth Phoenix fucking lost the match. And I was like, well, Beth Phoenix is leaving WWE. Makes sense. Vicky restarts the match, and Beth Phoenix hits the glam slam. One, two, three. And AJ Lee loses. 
Afterwards, AJ is upset, and then Cena it was like, Oh, don't worry, girl. You get her next time, man. I'm not pissed off anymore. Let's hug. Give a, give a little side hug there. And then Vicky Guerrero has her evidence. And then all of a sudden, like, Beth Phoenix is like, Oh, thanks, Vicky. And then Vicky's like, Nah, dude, you fucked up. You're fired. The fuck? That's so you wonder why people talk about bad shit when they leave WWE? Because you guys pull shit like that. I mean, I understand why they were doing it. So that way they would have a case for AJ Lee ever becoming Raw General Manager again. But it's just stupid. I, mean, I know it's for storyline purposes, but it's just stupid to, to let go of a talent like Beth Phoenix, who's done a lot for your Divas division and made the Divas division relevant, for you to treat her like that on her last night. I mean, if you guys just let her win and walk around happy, I'm pretty sure there, there would be no complaints from her. I'm pretty sure we wouldn't be hearing shoot interviews about her bitching about the WWE, but I'm pretty sure we're going to hear more of those in the near future. Moving on forward, we got another segment where Sheamus was like, don't worry, guys. I know I lost. It hurt. Big Show was the better man. I don't hate him or anything, but he was the better man. But I'm not here in the WWE to win. I'm here to fight. The fuck? Oh, my goodness. Pathetic. And then we have Big Show's dumbass. He's like, Sheamus, man, listen to me. You can't beat me. Sheamus. You pushed me to levels that I've never been in in my whole career. No! Shut up! That's stupid, man. So you're saying Undertaker, Kane, Triple H, yeah. Shawn Michaels, The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Never pushed you to those levels. Bullshit. And WWE, can you please, 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 please clarify what the fuck is Big Show? 7 feet 500, 7 feet 450, 7 feet 450, 7 feet 400 pounds. That's four different things that I've heard people call the Big Show tonight on Monday Night Raw. Clarify what the fuck he is. Because I don't know if he's 7 feet 4, 500. I don't know if he's 7 feet 460. I don't know if he's 7 feet 450. I don't know if he's 7 foot 400. All I know is that he's 7 foot and he's big. Clarify that because it's annoying to me. I'm sorry, I know, it's just little things, because you're confusing people, I mean, because they were talking about how Big Show lost weight, and now all of a sudden he's 7 feet 500 again, I mean, seriously, clarify that for me, please, please, and then afterwards Big Show's like, you're just nothing to redhead ginger snap, I'm like, what the fuck is this, and then Seamus thankfully ends the segment with the white noise, and you know, it's impressive that Seamus can hit the white noise, and then Ziggler did not cash in, and a lot of fans were disappointed, but come on guys, he just got bitched out by John Cena in like the middle of the show. You really expect someone that just got pushed down by John Cena to come in and cash in? Nah, I mean, I was kind of disappointed too, I thought that this would be the time, but really, to be honest, you don't just have, you know, Cena bitch out a guy, and then say, oh, th th this guy's ready to become World Heavyweight Champion. This is stupid, and I'm fine with Sheamus and Big Show continuing, not huge on the feud, but how their match was fucking awesome last night, and Survivor Series, after what I, who I say is on Team Punk and Team Ziggler, you will know why, uh, Team Punk and Team Foley, I mean, you will know why they need a lot of matches on this card. They really do need a lot of help on this card. Um, but moving on forward to the main event, Team Foley versus Team Punk, so pretty much Paul Heyman just hypes up Team Punk. And Team Punk ends up being Miz, Road Scholars, Alberto Del Rio, and CM Punk. And then Foley comes out, and well, fans were just like, whatever. And then Foley was all like, well, you know what? I have a team for you. And the team ends up being Kofi Kingston, predictable. Team Hell No, eh, it was kind of predictable. You could have gone either way. Randall Keith Orton and Ryback. Like, Ryback was a trump card. Like, Foley's like, oh, I'm not wrestling this match. You, you, you actually thought I was going to wrestle? No, nah, it, it's Ryback. So, really, to be honest, that's a stacked team. That's a Survivor Series match. Should be fucking fun to watch. But the problem is, you put your tag team and IC champions in that match. Not to mention your WWE champion. So, there's going to be a lot of matches. There's going to be a lot of matches, like, missing on this card, pretty much. There's going to be a lot of matches where you need to fill the holes. You need to fill in the blanks type of thing. So, pretty much, you know... It's like there's going to be a lot of matches that they have to make up for, but I'm fine with the Team Survivor Series match. But overall, this Raw, it was just filler matches with three promo segments that um, it literally was like once they announced Team Punk and Foley, I think people just want to know who the fuck would be on Team Punk and Foley. And the rest of the Raw was just kind of meh. I mean, it just felt like a meh episode of Raw. I mean, cool, we got a Survivor Series main event. But other than that, what was great about this Raw? I mean, yeah, cool, we got some good matches on here, but... Were they going to advance anything in the near future? I don't know.
but it seems like we're probably going to get like either Cena versus Ziggler or Team Cena versus Team Ziggler at Survivor Series, or we will get um, our truth and Antonio Cesaro and Big Show and Sheamus. So at least we got some matches kind of clarified, but they will need a lot of help to make this Survivor Series actually something to be, you know, memorable. But Team Punk versus Team Bully was a good start, especially since Survivor Series is three weeks away. Anyways, guys, if you guys like me, subscribe up above. Comment down below your thoughts on Monday Night Raw. My final grade for Raw was a C. It was just an average show. Twitter, at Chase Hollow 6 Day. Second channel, CO Live videos. And, 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 and. All three podcasts. Sorry, had a brain fart there. But anyways, I'll see you all later. Have a good Monday night. Have a safe Halloween. And I actually, someone else is going to be doing the NFL predictions video for Halloween. Stay tuned soon. Peace.